good afternoon, friends. Um, good afternoon. Today is a very hot Wednesday. And so for everyone out there who's outdoors under the heat of the sun, please take care. Be careful of getting heat stroke. Also, um, if you're watching this live stream that we are showing, that we are airing right now through your um, Facebook page, please don't forget to like, comment, comment anything, comment anything, tell your friends that our live stream of the Bible in Focus is on air now. And so that your friends can be able to watch the program that you're watching right now so that they would benefit from whatever we will be talking as well. And also, if you're watching this live stream through your YouTube channel, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Help our channel grow so that we could reach more areas where people needed um, the gospel of Christ, the words being exposited for their spiritual benefit. And as well, might as well continue on our announce announcements. And uh, regarding the membership of the Bible, of the City of God ministry, we encourage everyone to join us, to join us, be members of the ministry, so that you would be able to benefit. Um, as members, you would be able to benefit all, all the activities and everything else that the City of God ministry has to offer. And please do support the ministry. All your support will go on to... To, um, to all the activities and also uh, in our evangelization mission. Every time that you donate to the State of God ministry, it helps. It helps in supporting um, all, of the, all of the events, most of, most of all our Bible exposition in Pope Pius, where actually we're paying rent and also for our honorarium for our priests and also our choir. And... Uh, if you'd like to support, details are provided at the uh, description box of this video. Please do. And if you're in the area of Popeyes in the United Nations Manila, we encourage you to take part of our Bible exposition in the Archdiocese of Manila so that you would, be, you would know what is expository preaching, what Bible exposition is all about. All right? So, let's start our uh, Bible in Focus for today. Does civilization shape the culture? Or is it the other way around? If we actually take a closer look, every civilization have their unique culture. Culture then falls at the category of shaping every society, thus transforming or affecting the entire civilization. If we look at it that way, what happened then to the Paris Olympics was due to popular culture. If that is the case, then what we call as pop culture is actually not good. It is degrading. It is an abomination. Never has it ever dawned on mankind when we are supposed to be Christ-centered since our generation has the greatest privilege of having a wide access to scriptures. Since we have God's word, it would be expected of us that we would know what would please or displease God. But what is actually saddening was that people nowadays either chose to ignore God or be a non-believer, an atheist. Oh, this degenerate, very degenerate generation. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bubble in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. Talking about this situation at the Paris Olympics, 
It reminded me of Christ's words. Let me open scriptures to Matthew 12, verse 41. And I'd like to share that with you. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, behold, something greater than Jonah is here. Who are these men of Nineveh? Who are these men of Nineveh? If we try to recall in the Old Testament, right into the book of Jonah, let me then open the Bible to that page in Jonah. That's in Jonah chapter 1. Verses 1 to 2. Now the word of Yahweh came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. These are the people of Nineveh. These are the people whom Jonah was actually being sent for. Jonah was to preach against them. Yahweh brought Jonah there to tell the people about what? About God's wrath and what Yahweh will do to them as punishment for their stubbornness and rebellion against God. Nineveh was full of Vileness, corruption, idolatry, immorality, carnality. And Yahweh had enough of Nineveh. Nineveh then was appointed to destruction. When Jonah prophesied to them, they repented and turned back to Yahweh. And if we go back to the last part of verse 41 of Matthew 12, which, uh, which I read earlier. It says, And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. What did Jesus mean? That was Jonah then with Nineveh, Jonah the prophet, but now it is different. We have someone. And this someone is more than the prophet. This someone that we now have is the very prophecy, meaning what we had now, what we have now, kings and prophets of old, they would do anything to have the opportunity that we have now. With us is the very presence of the fulfillment of all prophecies, the Son of God. The Messiah is here with us and we chose to ignore him, to turn back on him. The very person that the prophets were actually talking about. People would kill to be in our place. We have the privilege and we took it for granted. Truly, you are to be condemned. Heathens. You people who chose to live in carnality and immorality. What makes you think you will have a full life? A life of total bliss when your life does not have Christ? Well, let me tell you what the gospel has to say. Let's turn to John 15. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 2. What does it say? I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he cleans it so that it may bear more fruit. What 
What makes you so sure, you people there in the Olympics? Most of all, people who loves, who love making fun, making fun or mocking Christ. You people, what makes you so sure that you will have a fulfilling life, a blessed life, so forth and so forth? Well, it's all here in verse 4 in John 15. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit from itself unless it abides in the vine. So, neither can you unless you abide in in me. So what makes you think that all of you abide in Christ by mocking him? Take a look what happens when you are not in Christ. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. But the part from me, you can do nothing. You, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Also try to remember what Paul said. It's in, uh, let me then turn, I'd like to share that uh, text with you. That's in the letter of Paul to the Galatians. That's in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. What does it say here? This is actually a warning. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. This is what basically happens. When we don't have Christ, we fall from grace, total depravity. We thus form a depraved way of thinking, lifestyle, leans on depravity. Let me share with you from the letter of Paul to the Romans that will happen to you, that will help you realize what does it truly mean living in Christ. That's in Romans chapter 2, verses 17 to 29. But if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God and know his will and approve the things that are essential, being instructed out of the law, and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of truth. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that one shall not steal, do you steal? You who say, that one should not commit adultery. Do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law through your transgression of the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you, just as it is written. For indeed circumcision is of value if you practice the law, but if you are a transgressor of the law, if you are a transgressor of the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So if the uncircumcised man observes the righteous requirement of the law, will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? And he who is physically uncircumcised 
If he fulfills the law, will he not judge you who, through the letter of the law and circumcision, are a transgressor of the law? For he is not the Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that which is of the heart, by the Spirit, not by the letter. And his praise is not from men, but from God. Very powerful indeed. These words here totally describe, okay, these words here totally describes living in depravity and also living in fullness of life, which is in Christ Jesus. This, that is basically what it means here. The circumcision of the heart. Because if the law of God, if the gospel of Christ is truly written in your hearts, the way you will live your life, it is not like that being shown on live TV. Drag queens, they call themselves mocking Christ. You will live a life of Christ and it can be seen bearing fruits. That is a clear sign that you are actually abiding in Christ. What are these fruits so that you would know? What are these fruits? St. Paul has it in his letter to the Ephesians. To the Galatians, I mean. That's in Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. All of these are outward signs showing that you truly are a child of God. That you have God's words in your heart. This is totally living the gospel of Christ. Can't you see this? It saddens me that seldom I see this in the world today. Today I see a world full of ambition. Greed, lust for power, fame, and popularity. Do you think those are good? No. When did ambition, greed, lust for power, fame, and popularity? When did all things, when did all these things become good? No. That's not. I see people losing the very meaning of life. Children, look at me. Listen to me. All of you had enough when God let you do all your foolishness. When will you turn back to God? When will you go back to God? Scripture has it that all of you are already being condemned. Repent, all of you. Put aside your delusions and fancy that there is no God. Wrong. Because there is a God. And you are already being judged. Don't ever think that you can do away mocking God. Your foolishness is your demise. I am talking to each and every one of you as the preacher of the gospel. It is not yet too late. Believe in the gospel. Live the gospel. Make Christ's gospel the standard of your life and you will see abundance unimaginable.
uh, let's go back to our reading in uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 12. Now we're turning to, just for a second here. Matthew 12. Now we're turning to verse 42. Where it says here, The queen of the south will rise up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it. Because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Again, these are words of God. Pointing the fact that we have the very wisdom of God already present with us personified in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord blessed us this way, that He gave us this very special opportunity to stand alongside with Him in His very presence. Jesus is greater than Solomon, for Jesus is wisdom Himself. Should I remind you of that? And because you take Jesus for granted, living your life as if it is your own, again, I tell you, you are nothing. Doing those drag stuff, you will amount to nothing. And just like the people like this Jude Bacalso, Education and degrees does not give you license to denigrate other people. Education and degrees does not always equal breeding and class. You are a classic example of this one, Mr. Jude Buck also. Oftentimes, people who actually are deprived of education they're the ones who actually show more breeding in class. A true human being, as God calls it, demands from every person never to lord ab above others. Who, who is he anyway? Matthew 20. Verses 25 to 27. But Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great men exercise authority over them. It is not this way among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you shall be your slave. Get the picture? Every one of you. And I'm calling you out, Mr. Jude Bacalso. Listen to me. Heed these words. I call every decent human's left. I call on every true Christian's. We do things with love. We will never condone evil acts. We call them out. We correct them. But only if we do it out of love. John 13. John 13, verses 34 to 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 
Remember what Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery. It's also here in the Gospel of John. Let's just move um, chapters like here in John 8, verse 11. She said, this is the woman. No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go and from now on sin no more. So what happened here? Jesus rebuked that sinful act by calling out on it. Go and from now on sin no more. Our Lord here truly pointed out that sinful act of the woman. If you have love in your heart, if you have Christ in your heart, you will act on it. You are under every obligation to point out and to call out every sinful act and to remind that person not to commit that sin ever again. Let us bow down our heads in prayer. Lord, we cast everything down before your feet. Our worries, our angst, our infirmities, our imperfections. Lord, we offer as sacrifice our contrite heart. Cleanse our hearts and renew it. Create a new heart in us, O Lord, and a clear mind. So we can always walk on your path of righteousness. Forgive us for all our ingratitude and our negligence. Transform us into a new person, deserving of your love and your gift of salvation. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So be before we end today's live stream program on Bible in Focus. Uh, you could contact us right after this episode, after this live stream regarding the membership of here in the City of God ministry. If you're interested, come join us. You could contact us here in our Facebook page. Also, if you want to help the City of God ministry, if you want to donate, also the details are there. Again, lastly, uh, we encourage also everyone so, and all those who are close to the United Nations Avenue there in Popayas. Now, receive us. I mean, be a part in one of our services. And I personally promise you, your life will change for the better. Now, take care, everyone. Keep calm. Jesus on. God bless.